Hey guys, I'm Craig Slate. And I'm Edward Todd. And you're listening to The Fresh Crap. I mean, we just had a great interview with Kim. Uh-huh. Uh, we got a bunch of gifts. I've got some tattoos, apparently. A tattoo sleeve that I'm going to be putting on here pretty soon. Yeah, that, that tattoo is going to go nice with that eagle you got on your back. You remember the eagle? I remember the you eagle. You remember that uh, night when I got it? I do remember the night. Okay. Yeah, I'm well, not sure you do, but... We can uh, talk about that later. <laughs> Yeah, now that was a great interview with Kim. Learned a lot. I am beyond excited about this next guest. I mean, we have a freaking produce legend coming in here. You know? <laughs> I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you I did mean, it. You know, I had to pull some serious strings to get this next oh, guest. I, did. I mean, you know, I had to write a couple of letters, a few different things. She did. <laughs> but. You know, we are happily joined by our good friend, Mr. Tomas Gonzalez. Tomas, what's going on, buddy? Man, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm uh, excited to be here. Yeah? Happy to uh, be in that elite group of people that you selected. <laughs> yeah. this. Wow. Yeah. You can, just that just, could, just the fact true. you threw my name in the hat, I just... <laughs> Beyond my control here. Yeah. It's got to go on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> uh, we, we need to. We probably need to start like an alumni of, of, of being on the show. Oh man, that can be it's a freaking great idea. That's life changing. Yeah. That could be. That could change some career trajectories. Oh. I'm not sure which direction that trajectory yeah, is. Yeah, I'm more concerned about some of the trajectory we're putting people on, not in the right way. So, But besides all that, I, I do want to see that eagle tattoo that he said. <laughs> yeah. that. We'll take a picture out Don't run it. away from yeah. it. It's still there. They, the, the, the feathers actually feel real based on all the hair he's got back there. It was many so. years ago, so it looks more like a, looks more like a vulture uh, than, okay. a, than a, a turkey vulture instead of an eagle at this point. Yeah, but so. it's there. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. So. Tomas, good to have you here, <laughs> and uh, got uh, a lot of a lot of ground to cover. I mean, you're a guy that has so much we can talk about. Here we go. PepsiCo in Venezuela, to the Florida state government, to, to now the the biggest retailer in the world. I mean, it's a pretty good trajectory, and you've had a couple of different uh, stories. I mean, I don't know which one I want to spend time on the most. I mean, because I really like the Venezuelan stories, but th- those are a little more uh, edgy. Okay. Yeah, edgy. So uh, I want to know about you, young man, young Tomas, and Cuba, <sighs> and how in the world you got started out. Tell me a little. Tell man, us a little bit about uh, that. Did you put the subtitles on that I requested? Before <laughs> we started in? Yeah, Mason's got. I got to tell you guys, <laughs> if, you, if you miss something, you better rewind it. And, we watch it slowly. Don't try to rip lips because it's not going to work. Or just write us and we'll, uh, um, we'll send the transcript. But um, I like the way I like to put it, uh, um, Craig, is uh, I think I've been in all, pretty much all sides of the industry from all angles. Right. You know, started as a grower, you know, shoot, came for, a, you call it a processor, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Go to the uh, uh, regulations with the government, regulating the industry, and then and then going into a retail industry. It's, it's really, um, I, I, <laughs> I really, I, I, you know, I've seen it all from yeah. all angles. You know, in fact, you can put it that way. You know, um, starting out when I was a kid, I mean, uh, four years old, I was sitting on top of a grate that was being pulled by bulls, you know, to go a little deeper into the ground so we can plant corn. So you were the weight for the... For the so <laughs> a little weight for the... <laughs> it wasn't much weight then, it's weight now. I mean, you know, some heavy bulls to pull that, but... Uh, but yeah, it was, it was starting... So, so, hang on, wait a second. So did they make like a, like a, like a car seat? It's probably some bailing wire. Yeah, there's, there's no car seat. No, for you. Yeah. no car seat. <laughs> did you have a car right. seat when you grew up? You didn't have a car seat. No, I didn't have a car seat, but I didn't also sit you on. Didn't the, I didn't, sit, I didn't sit on the plow either as they drug it through the ground. I sat so on the, the plow. I, I don't. I sat on the plow and shooting up bears with sling jam at the same time. So, <laughs> uh, but it was, um, you know, we. My family, entire family, always been, you know, farmers. You know, we grew up in farm. Middle of nowhere, uh, no running water, no electricity, you know, neighboring other farmers. Uh, back, 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 my, my grandparents came from Spain, and uh, 
there were farmers too. There were cattle ranches and farmers, and and then uh, it was it was an interesting story that I learned not long ago um, how my parents get to meet each other. Oh know? yeah. So um, yeah, it was, and a lot of people may know uh, a lot of the history that I'm gonna refer to now, but. Uh, uh, the way he, he interacted with my family in it, it was kind of interesting. Um, uh, my granddad on my father's side, my granddad on my father's side, they had neighboring farms. Fidel Castro took over Cuba in night, January 1st, 1959, and then he started taking land away from farmers and breaking it into pieces and keeping the biggest portion this and that. So my father told that he was another Castro. And he went into the mountains with guns to fight Fidel Castro. So, so he gets caught in the act. He gets thrown into jail, and then his dad comes to my mother's dad and and asks my grandfather, you know, hey, I need one of your daughters to marry my son who's in jail. So he gets a reduced sentence. Oh my gosh! And uh, and you didn't know a, this. That's that's a heck I wasn't born yeah. back then. You know, hey, usually you know, so, neighbors just. Well, I didn't know that because honestly, my dad passed two years ago, uh, and uh, and in that process, my mom uh, she told me the story. I didn't know that. I just learned that two years ago. That's crazy. And uh, so, in one of the conjugal visits, there come little Tomasito, and then I was, <laughs> you know, it was uh, Tomasito. It was a little interesting. <laughs> exactly. You know. uh, but but yeah, you know, keep working in farms. Uh, we still had a little bit of land, and then since I had like six uncles on my mother's side, four on my father's side, and everybody <coughs> kept the little portion. When one was the the pig farmer, the other one had chickens, the other one had the you know, and negotiating among our family was yeah. also a struggle, just so you know, because you know, one does the beans, the other one plantains and ethnic roots and things like that. The, you know, stuff we eat in Cuba, mm -hmm. and so. Um, uh, grew up, you know, loving farms, so I, I became an agronomist. I went to school and I, uh, uh, I uh, studied agriculture engineering. And uh, uh, it wasn't until 1993 when my father decided to, you know, it was he needed to do something for me, not for him. Because, you know, when he went to the American consul, because we came as an exile, you know, as political prisoners. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, when he went to an interview, you know, they asked him, uh, why you live, you know, why do you want to leave? He goes, I don't want to leave. You take that man with a beard out of the country, I stay. <laughs> you choose, either yeah. you let me go or you take him out, one of the two. Right. You know, but again, you know, I say, you know, immigrant coming in here over 22, 23 years old. You so know, it was 93, right? It was 93. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, so you do everything that everybody does when you first come here. You know, you sell newspapers, do ballet parking, you do everything you can so you can go to school. Right. Because that's the only thing I learned since I was a kid, you know, that I was taught, you know, you, you got to go to school, you got to get better, you got to study, you got to learn stuff, you know. And, um, and I really, I was too old to become a professional athlete. I couldn't join the military because, you know, I was in a United States, you know, citizen. I had to wait some time. And then, uh, so... Went back to school, and um, uh, because of some of the family connection, they knew I came in, it was coming from Cuba, and I knew about sugar cane. Um, I was hired to run a, a 500,000 hectares of sugar cane in Venezuela for a uh, Pepsi Cola company. 500,000 yeah, yeah. hectares. Hectares. Yeah. And that's two and, and a half. Uh, so, for uh, those you don't know, it's about two, two and a half two acres, half per, acres hectare. per hectare. So. so, that's a hell of a lot of sugar yeah. cane. We were not making sugars out of the cane. We were just processing the cane to take the sucrose for Mexico products. For Mexico, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was it was it was very interesting. Um, How I long did, did you do that? I did that for about two years. Mm. Um, yeah, two years, two times robbed at gunpoint for a watch or something like that. I said, I had enough. So, <laughs> After uh, your second robbing yeah. at gunpoint, he mm -hmm. thought, you know what, maybe yeah. I'll make another And his third watch. <laughs> his third there watch. There was, running out of watch, so I, I had enough. Why and the then, hell uh, when you quit wearing a watch? I mean, at some point, you'd be like, you know, I'm not going to wear it. Or just wear two. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, that's not about to get worked to you. Come two. take yeah. one. Yeah. Take, take one. Take one. I'm going to one, so. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's another experience. You look at a kid, 15 years old, pointing a gun at you, you look at their face and you're thinking about, man, this guy, you take, you, just to watch, you sure you can take <laughs> yeah, some Yeah, whatever more. else you want, but yeah. I mean, and um, but, but yeah, yeah that, was, that was another, came back to the States and um, um, 
I was hired by the, the Department of Agriculture where I worked for almost 15 years for the Department of Agriculture and the uh, uh, plant industry, uh, regulating a lot of citrus movements in the state of Florida. Um, uh, Florida got hit back in the days with canker and greening and it was, there was a lot of regulations and rules set up by the government. Um, working in new varieties, different rootstocks. It was, it was a good experience, but then I uh, uh, wanted something different. I met a guy from Walmart, and, uh, you know, here I am 13 years later. By the way, July 5th was my 13th year anniversary. Well, congratulations. With Walmart. Mm -hmm. 13 yes, years. 13 years. Very nice. And counting. And you've been there in the Florida office all 13, Yeah. Right? Yeah. But again, <laughs> worked every step of, of the way yeah. with Walmart, you know. I've, yeah. Well, a lot of all, folks have come all, through that office down there. Yeah. Quite a few. You've yeah. had a, had an opportunity to work with a lot of different individuals coming through. Very good people. Yeah. Very good people. No, it's a it's a hell of a story, Tomas. It really is. And like I say, I, I you know I don't know how many people know about it. And uh, but you you really came from. I mean, I can only imagine, right? In in '93, when the family comes over, brand new to the country. Yeah. You know, not I'm, I, there was probably not jobs. I'm guess waiting for everybody is basically you had to freaking you had to go find something to hustle. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, did you do cars? What'd you do? What was your first gig here in the states? Um, I actually worked at a laundromat pressing clothes. Okay. I got burned in several places. <laughs> I can show. It's a you know like a professional place. It's uh -huh. not a you know use a press iron. You use. Uh, but it was, yeah, you had to do like 350 pieces a day. I remember it was like $3.15 an hour. Boy. And I was going in, into like the uh, 300 and getting close to the 350, like 337, I think was the number. And the guy comes back and looked at the pile that I was done with and he goes, uh uh, no bueno, you're going to have to do that again. Oh, looked up by no. him and I go, man. Jeez, I'm selling newspaper tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was golly. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's, it's things that you go through and then making time so I could have gone to school at night or even on the weekends, you know, to try to get better myself. I didn't know any English, you know. It's not like I know a lot now, but, <laughs> it, it, you know, it was, uh, it was hard to communicate. It was, even though in, in Miami, you know. Not so much, were you I, guys in Miami at that time? Yeah, I was in Miami, but I, I didn't spend much time in Miami. Like I said, you know, from there I went to Venezuela, and then when I came back, I, I lived in Central Florida in the beautiful uh, Paul County. And what I got to go to uh, Florida Southern College, by the way. I was going to ask, where'd you go to school? Florida, <laughs> Florida Southern, yeah. Florida Southern Florida College. Florida Southern, nice. Yeah. And I, um, I went for uh, Citrus. I took a Citrus program there, which I'm very proud of it. Very good, pro very good program, very good school. All right, so I know Walmart keeps you kind of busy, but uh, you occasionally get some free time. What do you enjoy doing? Man, I tell you, I got three beautiful kids and a, and, and a beautiful wife, and uh, um, spend time with them. We, uh, I like to go fishing, play a little bit of golf when I can, uh, but family time is, is nothing beat that. It's, it's the best there is. Yeah. Well, I know you, you're kind of an avid cook. You cook uh, quite a bit. Uh, oh, you're going to get into that now? Well, oh, I got a recipe a, recently. A, a food is I've got this a is good chimichurri about. recipe for you. <laughs> with, a a Cuban, friend, with a Cuban twist in a, it. A friend gave me, yeah. Uh, I'll okay. try it out first, and I'll let you know if I like you it. You try and let me know, but um, <laughs> um, i like to see you in the process when, when you well, I'll video. prepare it, because... Uh, yeah, you definitely. You're a high tech guy. You mm -hmm. uh, you can do that. So yeah, we should take that. So, tell so me what, what I did is, wrong. So, so Tomas, we, we're not. We're kind of. A, we we're talking cryptic here. Ed was joking. The good friend that gave him this chimichurro recipe was. Oh, you talked about the one I. Mm -hmm. And so oh. we're gonna have to. So it sounded like he was making it up as he. It sounded like he was making it up as he, he went. He probably was. So I want to make it and see what it comes out to be. So, but here's the deal. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to make that, right? We're going to check it out, and that'll be for the listeners. It'll be the follow up to this. Right? Okay, follow we'll, up. We'll, I'll we'll follow up. A, we'll do a follow up on Jimmy that. Chimichurri, that check. Out. Well, I do. Well, the reason I want one thing. So I know you're cook. We'll get a recipe. You do a lot of that kind of stuff. But you mentioned your kids, um, and you know you've got young. You've got two daughters and a son. Sons in the military, 
quite accomplished musician. Uh, I mean, what a little bit about those guys. I mean, you know, I mean, I, we, good, good guys, good guy. Really, uh, uh, I've been fortunate with the kids. They turned out to be okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it was uh, there was a hurricane and uh, I don't remember what year exactly. But so my son was was still in high school and he saw the. Uh, the uh, Army Reserve helping people and breaking, you know, uh, uh, making ways mm -hmm. for, for emergency vehicles to go and deliver food and stuff. And he goes, Dad, I want to do that. I want to help out. So he uh, he signed in the uh, military, and I believe he's in the uh, he signed again for another six years. So he's in the uh, uh, six or seven year now in the Army Reserve. But then he switched because he. Like you say, he, he likes to play music, he wants to teach, he wants to be a, a music educator, a band director or something, and he's, uh, he switched to the Army uh, uh, Reserve uh, musical uh, uh, band. And right. It was pretty good, pretty good. Fourth of July, we, my wife and my daughter, we went to, uh, he invited us over to his little concert, and we were, I was like, wow, <laughs> he can really do that? I mean, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, think about it. These guys only meet like once a month, and then to put all that music together in that yeah. one meeting, you know, mm -hmm. and do shows here and there and play different instruments and different bands, you know, classical music, rock and roll, do you salsa. Play? Do you play an instrument? No, not no. me. Not me. My brother does, and uh, a lot of people in my family do, but not me. I'm a and the and the ag guy, man. He's the ag guy. He's the plow. He was the plow way. <laughs> He's the plow yeah, way. Yeah, he was busy. Yeah. He was busy sitting on a plow while everybody else was learning <laughs> how to right. play the guitar. So, and you got a daughter just graduated college. No, she has. She she finished in Tennessee and then she moved down to Florida to continue her. Oh, okay. Education is in the and in the medical field, going in there and then how the uh, my baby girl Sudi, who's uh, she's about to be twelve. And, yeah. Uh, on August and. Uh, Super good kids. She's going she to be a super t tennis star? Is that, <laughs> is that the plan? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully so. Hopefully so. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. Yeah, no, well, it's... Uh, it's where all the academies are at in Florida. What's that? Florida. Tennis yeah. academies. Yeah. So... Well, they've got that. What's the school for elite athletes there? Um, e, uh, EA or... It's up around Tampa, I think. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, eSports <laughs> or whatever, so... They're not going to... Just, you know, you're in the right place at that Florida deal. Although... I'm telling you, I got him trying to get you to move out west. It's, it's the weather, so but uh, get out of yeah. humidity. It's, he likes the hurricanes. It's definitely, <laughs> he different. likes he likes hurricanes once in a while. Yeah. Kind of mix things up. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah, it does it does keep things, things exciting? Yeah, he does. He does. <laughs> that's that's the truth. Well, there's that's nothing uh, boring about uh, South Florida. That's for sure. I don't care whether without a hurricane, there is great food. A lot of energy and a lot going on, so not a bad spot. Although it's just too bad they got all that humidity down there. But uh, you get used to it. You get used to it. Just like by now, listen, I got used to my accent. So it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, they're understanding you completely clearly <laughs> right now. It's not a problem. We we won't have to do any yeah, subtitles. You people or adjust to yeah. the different. Yeah. But uh, no, Tomas. Uh, seriously, uh, you know, uh, really appreciate your friendship, uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, certainly glad that you were able to come on and be on the show with us today. Because, uh, like I say, I, I, you know, a lot of people know you from the the business side of the of the world, you know, and and know about you in the ag space with Walmart, right, as, as a buyer, but. Uh, I don't think a lot of them really realize how much history is behind it. You know, we didn't even get to get into some of how your life experiences, you know, influence what you know. I mean, your success at PepsiCo really was influenced about some of how you had to live in Cuba. Exactly. You learned yeah. from that, you know. Lack and, of resources and, you know, making the best of everything with what you have. You know, you go to other places and then you take what you learn from your life experiences, you apply it to a different mm -hmm. crop or whatever it is, you know. I, I, you know, I created a different projects of fertilization programs using organic matter, to, you know, to substitute for chemical fertilizer, and it was a success. And yeah. It was published in a magazine. Who would have known? I go, Jesus, this is what I used to <laughs> this do. That's what we were doing in Cuba. In day to day. To. <laughs> yeah, if I, don't, if I didn't do it back then, I wouldn't even Oops. <laughs> survive, yeah. you know. It's, uh, uh, things that sometimes we take for granted, you know, as... Uh, 
it's amazing how valuable it is, you know. Yeah. And, and I have a ton of stories about it. I'm sure you all have too. Well, we're gonna do a follow up. Yeah. This is gonna this is gonna need to have a follow up, and we'll have to do another one of these. But because I've learned a bunch of stuff today too, I think, as we were saying before, I think folks really, you know, we see a lot of people. We see each other at trade shows, and we talk about business, and we um, maybe get past the weather, but not about you know where folks have come from and. Who knows? Maybe you'll get some better deals. You know, people will be <laughs> like, "Wow, I know Tomasa's story." So Good luck with that. I'm gonna give him a better price. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's probably not going to be uh, <laughs> the, the, the case. But uh. but no, I mean, it is, and the show is about, like I say, friends talking with each other about life experiences. You know, ideally, we're hoping people, you know, when they get a chance to listen in, you know, they take something from somebody's story, right, and they can relate to it, right? Because, like you said, we all have stories. Right, we all and and most everything, at least for me and, and a lot of people I talk to, and it sounds I know with you for sure, it's like it's really those hard things, those difficult times when it seems like it's 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 not a great place to be. It's those things that inform you and give you the tools and stuff you need to do to, to have success later down. That that's the stuff you lean into down the road that really help you uh yeah, make a difference or you know, it certainly has for me and, and I know from like I say just talking to you that's been the case, but uh yeah, I hate it. Uh, I do think we are up against the wall on time. We're up against the wall. And uh, Tomas, thank you very much. You got full full schedule planned here for OPS. Yep, yep. Yeah. Good show so far. Oh yeah. 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 Good speakers. Uh, good. They're talking about the right things. Nice. This is one of the show where they, people talk and they bring conversations to the table, eye openers about the future and sustainability and waste and. You know, things that we should really be paying attention to. Uh, I enjoy. That's great. I really enjoy. That's great. All right. Thanks, guys. See you all a little bit.